What I, I'm concerned about, and I'm going to put in a late policy order um, for next week for us, the city solicitor, if it's possible from the city webpage that we have the reports of the office campaign fin political finance so the public can view those much easy, easier. If you review those um, finance reports right now, you'll see several candidates who have raised thousands and thousands of dollars. And the majority of the money is being spent on restaurants, coffee shops, Uber, Lyft. I'm not sure this, we want the public to be financing something like that. So I need to see when we adopt something that there's going to be some accountability in the system. Um, it's very easy to look. You know, my proposal, got, you're getting criticized, says limit it to $200. Get rid of the $1,000. Council Mar was certainly correct. A thousand dollars. I don't have many, many one thousand dollars contributors. I just have a good camp, uh, fundraiser from um, friends of mine who happen to own Dunkin' Donuts. Again, so-called writers criticizing that roundly and bloggers that I'm in the pockets of Dunkin' Donuts. They are Portuguese immigrants, most of them who, who have worked, came to this country with nothing, and became very successful. It was the first time I ever asked them for assist financial assistance in 30 years. But others can take $1,000 contributions like this, have a little wine and cheese party, and have $1,000 contributors just lining up that work for uh, real estate companies and the, selling the, the property in the city. But that's okay. And others, certainly other ethnic groups have contributed, other candidates, very handsomely, not criticized. So it is a political poison that we're seeing in the city. It's very, very unfortunate. So before, I, I need to see that this thing that's going to go on the ballot includes things like that. Has to have that. The thousand dollars should be gone for everybody, and out of state money completely from everybody. I have no problems with that at all. Uh, but you know, it's a level playing field for everybody. Not everybody, not every candidate is going to have the financial resources to have a wine and cheese party and raise thirty thousand dollars in one evening. It's not. It's that's very limited to certain individuals that are running for office, and it's not fair. So laying, level playing field for everybody, drastic change, but it has to be spelled out. We don't know who's going to be elected in, in November, so the new, next council will decide if this ballot question is approved, how this is going to be worded. But I think we have to lay the groundwork for <clears throat> this, these, um, the framework of this uh, initiative in the ballot question so that people know. I don't think I ever spent any money in 30 years in going to restaurants, but these candidates, it's just look at the finance reports. And, and Nancy Glau, I'm going to ask you later if you to, that we can do that so the public has e easy access to, to, to that. But I, I don't want taxpayers' money to some senior homeowner struggling to pay their bills every month, and some candidate is out spending thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on restaurants and coffee shops and the like, or hiring your best friend for your campaign consultant, paying them 25000 without any accountability. Those things have to be fleshed out, have to be part of this ballot so that people are part of that. That's, you know, I've been saying this for years, and I think this is a great opportunity to work during the next week to include some of that language in, in there, and I think uh, it will go a long way for maybe – not 80 percent, maybe 100 percent of people voting for that. But I, I just do, do think that people should be made, made aware of, you know, it's not a level playing field. And certainly we don't get any accurate reporting uh, in, in the it's not, they're not even media, I guess. They're just bloggers, the public. So that's my two cents for right now, and we'll go forward.